Hello there, this is Rom Wills coming back at you with yet another podcast. Who are the select? Now, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question because since I since Rom Wills introduced that terminology to YouTube, people have gone off on all sorts of crazy tangents. You know, everything from thinking, oh, it's just their money that make them select or Pookie and Ray Ray are select. No, let me let me just clear that up for people. I thought I did once, but you know, sometimes people still don't get it. Now, first of all, the select non-select thing is a sexual hierarchy. Let me be clear, not a social hierarchy. It is a sexual hierarchy. It represents the men who women want to have sex with. And that's a very uh Important key, not who they have sex with, but who they want to have sex with. These are the most sexually desirable men. That's in a very, very important point. Now, in order to understand it, sexual, uh, you can break down what turns on a woman sexually down to three principles. And it's not your money. It's not your status. Though a a man who select can have both of them, and I'll get into that in a bit. But the three things are 75% of his physicality. A woman got to look at you and want to have sex with you. And a man who would be select is a man who has a physical presence that attracts a multiple amount of women. Now, understand when I say physical, and it don't have to be their face. A lot of dudes think it's just their face. But see, all women don't agree on what's a handsome face. And even if they see it as handsome, they don't necessarily see it as sexy. Because with women, they can look at a man's face, say he's handsome, but he gives off a boy next door vibe. Or they can look at him and look at his face and say, oh, he's cute. Or, you know, they can look at their brothers and say he's handsome. That don't mean they want to have sex with him. And usually in that case, if it's women who focus primarily on a face, which is like so tiny, it's crazy. And won't, you know, they'll ignore a beer gut, but he got a handsome face, a rare. And plus that type of man just on the face would have to have like, it would have to be just outstanding. Outstanding. And even then, he would still have to have some physique. Now, the physique um, is more uh, connected to the third tier of uh, sexual attraction a woman will have for a man. So the physique, that could be, it could be because he's tall. It could be because he has veins popping out. It could be because he has six-pack ass. It could be because he's stocky. He, or he, look, he could be like a big dude who just look like he'll toss a woman, regardless of her weight. Women look for a man that projects a certain type of physical dominance, even if he, and that's not even including uh, height. Well, not uh, like, well, let me explain that. Height is in there, but like a better way of explaining it is a man could be short. He could be shorter than average, but if he has a muscular physique, women go and check him out. I've witnessed witnessed this personally. That's why I say, you know, they go, if he's still carrying himself in a masculine way, and in a dominant way. That's what women, that's what turns on a woman. A woman sexually, to really express a sex drive, want to submit to a man, at least sexually, at least in the bedroom. That's important for her orgasm and everything. So a man has to uh, project that in his uh, physique. And that physique is really just a representation, a physical representation of his masculinity. Because that energy, the energy of masculinity turns a woman on. That's why uh, with a lot of women, they like beards. You know, that's why, you know, that's why they like a square jaw because it represents masculinity. That's why they like big shoulders. That's why they like a V. That's why they like height. That's why they like calloused hands, you know. And, of course, every woman got, uh, every single woman got a personal taste for what they want. Now, for the most part, it's about, you know, a mesomorphic thing. For the most part, mesomorphic body, not quite too... uh, not too much body fat, but not slim. But you still have some women who are still like a slim dude, as long as he portrays a certain masculinity, and um, like a bigger dude. Now, that's the primary thing. 
Those are the primary things. So you got the physique, you got the masculinity, and the masculinity, that's more of an intangible thing. You know, they carry themselves in a masculine way. They, they're assertive. They're aggressive. They can be protective. They got a hunter in them. They'll go get that money. That's a masculine thing. That's masculine energy. The same masculine energy in a man that's in a lion or a termite. So those are two things. So like if a dude, like say if a dude, uh, maybe more average bill, average looking in the face, but if he just got that, huh, that masculinity, women can actually feel that. That's why you'll get some dudes who might not have that classic V shape, could probably stand to lose some weight, but just how they carry themselves, even down to how they walk, women go crazy. And then a third component, which uh, helps a lot of men whose physique might not be up to par, and sometimes maybe they might not even be the most masculine, but charisma. And there's several types of charisma, like, a chari- they, like primarily a sexual charisma that allows a man to connect to a woman. That connection piece is big. That's why sometimes you will see an average or even ugly man with a very attractive woman. I guarantee his charisma is off the chart. Like I have a, a good friend, I always tell him, yeah, man, you got the charisma of 10 men. So those those are the select. But see, one of the things to understand about that, that doesn't, physiques, charisma, masculinity aren't limited to a social class. Now, recently I had a video where I said non-select men are not smarter than select men. That's because they, they're not. Some people want to think, oh, we're smarter than because they focus on one social class of select men, but just like a pookie might have a muscular physique or uh, or a nice physique that appeals to, uh, I'll say, a consensus of women. Like the, all of them could look at him, uh, like in a group of 100 women, 70 of them think, oh, yeah, he got a nice physique. He can get it. You know, just like a pookie can, just like a Ray Ray can. Oh, psh. Um. A dude who is a blue collar worker. I'm going to have a uh, podcast coming to address that. He could be a uh, plumber. Um, he could work, a, be a salesman. He could still hit the gym. You know, or he could be a professional. See, that's why I said, that's why I specifically said, no, there's no difference because what makes a select don't have nothing to do with uh, somebody's GPA. The first cut is always a physical thing and an energetic thing with women. Now, if they can find a dude with a nice physique and he's a doctor or an attorney, and I especially know some attorneys who could throw up 400 pounds like Pookie and Ray Ray can't deal with them or and play them in ball or whatever. You know, that's a bonus to a woman because the first cut is always the physicality is the sex. Then they look for the other stuff. If they're in a certain social class, you know, they might feel like a Pookie got a muscular physique or something, but they still not going to sleep with them. And I know some guys say, well, I've seen a professional woman with a, with a pookie. And, well, do you, know she, do you know her personally to know what her profession is? Sometimes dudes mistake a well-dressed woman for uh, a professional. No, she might be an office assistant or something. Or just working in an environment where she needs to dress up like she got some sense. I want y'all to think about that. But it's always that thing. And the thing is, that goes across because if you think about working out in the gym, most, except for like something like a Planet Fitness, and I'm giving them a free plug, most gyms, you got to pay a good amount of money for it. The average gym cost is $58 a month. And then if you get a personal trainer, and these are the guys with money can usually afford to get that. Like a lot of guys who are climbing into the select, they usually have to hit the gym. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts. And usually some people will say, well, I seen a man with this woman and, you know, she, you know, he wasn't all that. And he ain't had charisma. He ain't even seen particularly masculine. Um, it's amazing. And somebody going to say that, but it's like, dude, y'all call yourselves red pill. But then somebody doesn't remember that women cheat. And there's a, a large number of sexless marriages out here. Like many women, they'll get that social guy for purpose, uh, social purposes, but then they in an open relationship. And then they, uh, the couple will call up, uh, you know, some muscular young boy or whoever to, like, uh, take him out. In fact, there was an article in a GQ magazine uh, a year or so ago 
about this dude. It was a brother who was uh, servicing these cuckolded women. What I mean, he was fucking like other dudes' wives while the husband was watching. They said that dude was a doctor. See, it's about the physique. Those are the select. Like, I can walk in a room, and I, I trust me, I can walk in a room. Just I, well, I just take, even though I've said I don't judge a face, oh, I can judge a body, though. And I can give you a good idea if I look at a guy and say, okay, you likely. And, in fact, there's a lot of dudes out there don't even realize that they focus on so much other shit, and the women, like, trying to hand it to them. No, but if you got a physique that women like, it don't matter your social class, whatever. You know, that's not the primary thing. It's going to be the physique. And then they get into, okay, is this dude in my social class? Is this dude uh, go to it, practice my religion? That's when all that other stuff, how much money that dude got. Like the select man, the money ain't as much. For most of them. No, no, I say some of them. And then the other ones, they still got to have that physique. But then it might not be just at that point where women ignore the other shit. Then then it's the second cut. Like status, money, religion, all that other stuff. That's the second cut. You know, but the primary one, when women checking out a man, sizing up a man, only thing she could tell from him in that first few seconds is his physicality and his style of clothes. That's all she can tell. And in fact, even if you want to be head that style game, it looks better if you got a good physique to wear those clothes. So those are the select. Like the select, whether they are Mr. Good Bar or a masked man. A masked man still got to have a good body. They still got to build their body up to wear the mask. They can't just say, yeah, they got a degree or something. That don't turn on a woman. Women are turned on carnally. They turned on by your body. If you pay attention to women, you can you can sit back and pay attention. They always checking out a man's body. In fact, when they when they describe men to other women, they always use physicality. I want y'all to think about that. They always use they'll say, "Oh, that tall dude, or that uh, chocolate brother, or that light skinned brother, or you know that body dude." And that's the first way they describe it. It's like, okay, what do he look like physically? So think about that. So those are the select. That's why I emphasize the body game so much. And let's only and if you want to get past that, your your charisma better be like level nine thousand. And if it ain't, psh, hit the gym. Get that aesthetic down as best as possible. Trust me, women check out muscles. It's like even if you slim, if you real slim, you can still hit the gym, get some muscles, pop those veins out. That turn them on too. But it's the physicality. So those are the select. And, uh, you know, I know some people want to come on and say some other shit, dude. <laughs> I've, been, I've been checking, looking at this shit since 79. Okay? 1979. And I've been observing who getting what since 1979. And that was a common denominator with men who get multiple women. Now, you can always get one woman. Hey, everybody can get one woman. But uh, then it becomes how she treating is she wearing is she wearing granny panties to bed or is she wearing Victoria's Secret thongs to bed or is she wearing absolutely nothing to bed? So that'll tell you, a lot of dudes, they non-select to the women or is she giving you hell? Is she waking you up with a blowjob or something? So, you know, and even when you see them together publicly, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors because any public thing I take for granted any damn way unless they all over each other. Or I take with a grain of salt, unless they like physically all over each other, like use like you can just walk by and feel the spark. So let me just define that. Unless you know, if you're talking about if you're talking about elevating yourself, your body anyway is the vehicle in which you're able to take action as a man. You're able to do stuff. If you're a hustler, you still gotta be in shape to hustle. And trust me, that it gets deep. Even um, even economically, they got studies out there saying, like, you know, many CEOs and stuff are like six male CEOs are like tall. So that physicality is always there. And if you can't be that tall, thing, shoot, get your body right. Shoot, trust me. Like, we got to start being honest about it. Everybody looking for shortcuts or looking to short circuit like millions of years of evolution just for, 
you know, just, just to suit them. Because nature, I'm going to be honest with y'all, nature isn't kind. Only 40% of men will pass their genes on into the future. Hell, Genghis Khan, probably probably a quarter of the men listening to this, regardless of race, are descended from Genghis Khan. That should tell you something. One man. So it, nature don't give a fuck. So anyway, that's all I got for today. I'll talk to y'all later.